What is up guys, it is Nick and we are here for the Friday FanDuel lineup builder. We've got a lot of news today, we'll wait on some more tomorrow before I go ahead and pump out the final look. Uh, I'll also start taking a look at some bets. I'll probably use either Bet Online or BetDSI, not sure which one. Um, yeah, I'm not sure which one I'll use, but I'll use one of those to show... To show what bets when we talk about that. I'm also going to be changing the Fantasy Draft lineup builder to a GPP show. We don't have any GPP shows, so we're going to make that a GPP show. Since it's essentially like DraftKings, we're just going to turn it into a GPP show. But that's enough for uh, that's enough for the intros. We're going to be picking out what GPP I'm going to be playing this weekend. So we got $47 here on FanDuel. So what uh, what are we going to be playing this weekend? So we got the $44 bomb. Um, can I sort these by... I mean, we'll go up to 50 bucks. I want at minimum like a $25 GBP. So there we go. So we got the $50 single entry hot route. Let's see, how does this pay? It's like an 18% get paid. It's so terrible. The payouts over on uh, over here on FanDuel are just so incredibly terrible. I think we're just gonna play the forty-four dollar big GPP. Pays out twenty-five, almost twenty-five hundred. Probably one of their better payout structures over here. So we're gonna be playing the forty-four dollar. So let's go ahead and enter a new lineup, and let's talk about things over here on FanDuel. So I enter a cash. I understand this is a GPP, but I enter my uh, as if it was a cash game over here. So we can start out, we're gonna start out simple here. Start out with the defense. So my favorite play on defense over here is the Dallas Cowboys coming in at 3,400. The next defense that I would consider, I'll talk about it in a second, but the next defense that I would consider that's anywhere even close is you gotta come all the way up. We gotta keep going all the way to the Bears at 4,300 why i like the cowboys so much they're priced way down here and really overall unless you nail the one or two defenses you're really just looking for your defense to get somewhere between six eight points they get you a five it's not really that big of a deal point is the cowboys are 3400 they help make things work if you want to pay up i like the bears defense and then i like the two top defenses of the jags and the vikings We'll get the tight end out of the way quick here. We'll get the chalk tight end out of the way. Eric Ebron. Jack Doyle is out this week, so Eric Ebron is the starting tight end and the only tight end um, that Luck will use, really. So at 5,500, Eric Ebron is an easy lock and load. So over here on FanDuel, they're a little bit, so we got to scroll up. So we got about 7,300 per player remaining for quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, and a flex so moving over to wide receiver over here where it's not point per reception it's half point ppr or half ppr it's not half point point per <laughs> you get my point it's it's half ppr it lowers my interest on michael thomas a little bit at 9k and it definitely takes me all the way off alvin kamara because a lot of kamara's value is through the receiving game now while he can get touchdowns it's not a given, but we're going to start here with the running back chalk of the week. Should be the chalk, and that is Lat Murray, 5,200. Dalvin Cook got ruled out for this weekend. Where is Dalvin? How much? Dalvin Cook was 65, so Dalvin Cook is out with his hamstring. Got ruled out earlier today. Uh, sorry about the late nature of this going up. I had some stuff this afternoon that I had to take care of, and that's why this video is going up later in the day. But Lat Murray at 5,200, and it's just the lock of all locks over here on FanDuel. Uh, and at 5,200, it helps out the salary, bumping it up to 7,650 per player. I don't need to say much about Lat Murray. The game script should be in his favor. The only other running back on the team where... There it is, Buffalo, Minnesota. The only other running backs on the team are Rock Thomas and uh, Mike Boone. Um, C CJ Ham's a no, but uh, Rock Thomas is really the backup 
Rock Thomas and CJ Ham. CJ Ham has seen one touch, I believe, yet. Yeah, one touch. Uh, he was targeted twice against San Francisco, but didn't catch a ball. He has one touch in two games. I'd assume he'll maybe get four or five this time, but it's Rock Thomas and CJ Ham. I don't even know if Mike Boone is Mike Boone even on the team. I guess Mike Boone is on the team. It doesn't matter. It's C.J. Ham. It's essentially it's Lat Murray, 5,200 for Lat Murray when he's going to get 20 plus touches, and he's not a great receiver, and he hasn't had a target this season because they've had Dalvin Cook. But one reception? Can I get one reception out of Lat Murray? Get me one reception for five yards. There's a point over here on Fanduel. See if we can get that out of out of Lat Murray, but uh, 5200 for Lat Murray is just an absolute lock for me. Let's go get out of that. Uh, how do I click all? Okay, so in the nature, because I always want three running backs, we're gonna put Lat Murray in the flex. So 5200. Scroll all the way down to Lat Murray. Plop him in there. And we'll hop back to running backs. So there is some paying up at running back you could do. I do really like Todd Gurley over here on FanDuel. But I'm looking to kind of jam in a little bit of the higher end wide receivers. So I'm going to step down here to 7,400 to Jordan Howard. Um, good game script should be in his favor against Arizona. As well as coach speak as well. Um, they don't have it over here. But uh the coaches were talking about how they needed to get Jordan Howard more touches, more involved in the game, more rushing attempts. So I'm hoping he'll get, you know, his normal couple of receptions. Um, let's say he gets two receptions for 15 yards. So that'll give him 2.5 points. Uh, hopefully he'll get closer to the 20 rush attempts and closer to this 82 yards. And against the uh, Arizona Cardinals, I think he gets into the end zone as well as gets some garbage time carries. I like me some Jordan Howard over here on FanDuel for only 7,400. My final running back, I do like Lamar Miller, but I like him a little bit more on, on uh, DraftKings where he's only 5K. Over here, I'm going to go with my boy Gio Bernard. So Gio Bernard um, is going to be used a lot in the passing game, which doesn't help a lot over here on FanDuel. But he's only 6,400 over here. Uh, and in games where Joe Mixon, I think I think we can go back to the, I think it goes back to Jeremy Hill time as well, when it was just Gio and, and Jeremy Hill. In games in which they missed and Gio received 14 plus touches, he's averaging 16 and a half um, fantasy points per outing. And in games where he gets just 10 or more targets, or 10 or more touches, which includes exactly 10 and includes 11, he's averaging 14 fantasy points per game. So that's on DraftKings, so you got to subtract a little. It'd probably be like 11 over here or, or something like that because he does get the receptions. Um, but I like Gio Bernard. He should get almost all the work uh, for, the, uh, for the Cincinnati Bengals. You can see... The current options behind him are really Mark Walton, Quentin Flowers, former USF quarterback, switched running back for the NFL. Um, he's an option as well. Trey Carson's on the IR. So it's Mark Walton, Quentin Flowers, and I believe they signed Thomas Rawls. I'm not, in, I, I'm pretty sure. Let me look it up real quick just to make sure I'm not giving you guys false info. But I believe they also signed Thomas Rawls. Let me look this up. Thomas Rawls. It's showing his Central Michigan stats. Yeah, Bengals. Yeah, yeah, Bengals signed Thomas Rawls. So I'm not quite sure who's the exact backup. It's probably probably Mark Walton and then Thomas Rawls because Rawls has only been in for this week. Uh, but maybe with the extra time with their last game being on Thursday, Thomas Rawls will be ready to go for the backup. It doesn't matter. Gio Bernard will see most of the work. So we have 8,000 per player with three wide receiver slots and the quarterback slot remaining. With that much money remaining, I'm just going to go ahead and lock in. I'm going to lock in my favorite play of the entire week. It's more I like him more on DraftKings than I do FanDuel, but at 9K, I think he's very affordable, so I think we can lock in Michael Thomas. Uh, I'm also going to lock in in the high-scoring game. Marshawn Lattimore has not been very good this year, so I'm going to go ahead and put in Julio Jones as well. Um, 
Julio Jones massively underpriced on DraftKings. We'll talk about that in tomorrow's video. Final look at DraftKings. Um, but Julio Jones, still a great play over here on on uh, FanDuel. Now, there is a little bit of an option that you could step down off of one of these guys and look at a T.Y. Hilton with no Jack Doyle. Hilton has seen 11 targets in each of the first two games. I think you could see similar targets here with upside for more looks for the red zone. He does have a touchdown in the first two games, I believe. Yeah, he has one touchdown in each of the first two games, but I believe you know, t touchdown regression comes. You're not going to score a touchdown every single week. Unless you're a running back, then you, you might. But but really, realistically, no one is scoring a touchdown every single week. So you can't keep expecting T.Y. Hilton to score a touchdown. But my point with this is, is that I think T.Y. Hilton's touchdown equity goes up with no Jack Doyle. Even though Eric Ebron's been the one catching the touchdowns. If you get my point. I like Will Fuller. I like him more on DraftKings, where he's 5,900. 72 is a little pricey for him. That makes him, what, wide receiver 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. It makes him wide receiver 13, which is a little bit more than I want to pay. So we're going to step way down here, and we're going to grab Michael Crabtree. Uh, I really like Crabtree this week. Bradley wrote he'll avoid Chris Harris, which is what you want to do. I believe Chris Harris will get Willie Sneed. Um, and Crabtree has shown in his career to be a really good red zone threat. Um, and he just hasn't had the touchdown equity for through the first couple games. Um, he had six targets and then ten, six targets in a game where it wasn't even close. And then 10 targets in the game against Cincy where they were, where they were trailing. Um, I think this will be a more competitive game. And I think nine to 10 targets with high touchdown equity, um, is in the cards for Michael Trabtree. You just need one touchdown out of Crabtree um, with some receptions and yards, and you should pay off the price tag. I'll go over some other guys that I really like. Um, I'm not, like, stuck on Crabtree. He's not, like, a lock by any means. I just like him this week. Other options include Allen Robinson. I don't like the matchup. I, I have to do more... Re Patrick Peterson is not playing press man-to-man -man and shadowing people anymore because the coaching staff in... Arizona is stupid but point is is I don't think Patrick Peterson will shadow anybody so they can move Allen Robinson away from Patrick Peterson if they want whoever they want to kind of and pa Patrick Peterson's playing zone now so you can just run away from his zone and and there you go so I do like Allen Robinson I think I'd go Michael Trabtree before him I like Tyler Lockett I just think Michael Crabtree has more touchdown equity uh than uh Crabtree and Aguilar like Aguilar too this week um but I think I just think Michael Crabtree has more touchdown equity than those than those players so that's why I'm not going with them um I like Cooper Cup but I'm not gonna really I don't really want to mess with the the Rams skilled position players unless it's Todd Gurley or they're severely underpriced and I don't really think Cooper Cup is severely underpriced at 6300 Moving down here, Brandon Marshall, interesting. It looks like Doug Baldwin should still be out. So Brandon Marshall has maybe just a little bit lower touchdown equity to Crabtree. Uh, Marshall's still a really good possession wide receiver. Uh, he, he looked pretty good on, on uh, Monday night against the Bears, a uh, tougher defense. If we come down here, um, I do like Pierre Garçon if Marquise Goodwin is out. Goodwin still remains questionable. Um, I believe... Uh, Shanahan said that he would not be ready to go today if the game was today on Friday, but he's hoping he'll be ready to go. He'll be good to go uh, come Sunday. Uh, D.D. Westbrook, I always li I like D.D. Westbrook because people think Keelan Cole's the better receiver. I think D.D. Westbrook's the better receiver, so you always get D.D. a little bit under owned. I liked Willie Sneed earlier in the week, and then I realized that Chris Harris Jr. is going to be on him. You could look at Willie Sneed. He's had some really good games to start the year, but I don't like picking on Chris Harris, so probably won't go there. If you want to throw some GP, or if you want to throw some darts, I do like John Ross. I think eventually he's going to have a blow-up week. Uh, it hasn't happened, but I think it's going to happen. Uh, I love Calvin Ridley. Um, at 5K, it's, it's a fair price. Um, I could see going there. Um, in week one, he had two targets, but Julio Jones had a ridiculous, I, Julio had 19 targets in week one. I think it was just, he had so much of the market share. I'm just throwing out week one for anybody that's not Julio Jones and the Falcons offense. 
this seems like the much more sustainable look, and if Marshawn Lattimore shows up, this is probably more of a GPP play on Calvin Ridley, but if Marshawn Lattimore shows up as Marshawn Lattimore from last year and bands up uh, Julio Jones, even though Julio Julio went for like 150 and, nine, and 113, I think, against Lattimore last year, um, when Lattimore was really good. But if Lattimore shows up and locks down Julio a bit, I think Calvin Ridley, they're trying to work him in as wide receiver too. I think he'll get there by the end of the season over Mohamed Sanu. Uh, but uh, interesting GPP flyer on Ridley. Geronimo Allison is another player I really like. It looks like um, not one of Rodgers' favorite targets, but Rodgers does, does like him, and he always has been good when he's on the field um, with eight and six targets. I think he's he's a lock for five targets I would say and in a game against the Redskins should be should have a good market share in that game especially if the if the if the if the defense for the Redskins can blitz as well as they have and actually get to a hobbled Rodgers you may see the Redskins get up in that game and that would mean more opportunities for Geronimo Allison uh T.Y. Hilton looks like he's gonna play but just keep in mind if he does happen to sit Ryan Grant is a really good play um, but I don't think that'll become a thing. Tyler Bo Boyd, um, I was really on him earlier in the week, but I don't think I need him anymore. Um, I think the five targets is the sustainable amount of targets. Um, five to seven targets. I don't think the nine is where we'll look. But five to seven targets uh, for Tyler Boyd and at a cheap price, I think I think for the opportunities it's worth a flyer. Uh, we'll move on to the quarterbacks here. Uh, and, and, and that's not, it's pretty easy over here on FanDuel. So I have about 8K left. Uh, which kind of restricts me. I wish I had 83 for Cam. We can make that work. I'll show you a little bit of a workaround for that. But uh, up top, obviously, you have Patrick Mahomes. Probably Q. He's not my QB1, but he's probably chalk QB1 of the week. Um, probably especially over here on FanDuel. It's, it's pretty easy to fit him in if you want him. Um, so if you want Patrick Mahomes, you can jam him in. Um, he'll be chalky. Drew Brees, I like more than Patrick Mahomes. It's a dome game. The Falcons give up a lot of receptions to the running back. He should be able to dump it off to Kamara for an easy hundred yards. <laughs> to in all series, probably like probably like eight dump offs to Kamara for sixty yards is is almost like a lock, um, which is why it's hard to fake Alvin Kamara on on DraftKings because that's like fourteen automatic points if he finds the end zone on one of those receptions. It's twenty automatic points, and that's not even including rushing or rushing touchdowns. I really like Cam. He provides a nice, safe floor. It should be a competitive game with Cincinnati, so he should have to continue to throw. Matty Ice, a little bit too expensive for me over here on FanDuel at 7,700. I love him at 5,700 over on DraftKings. Uh, Jimmy G at 7,400 is, I, I think he's going to be my guy over here on FanDuel unless I can get up to a Cam or the mid range. Uh, Carson Wentz is interesting, more of a GPP play for me than Cash. I do like Andy Dalton at 7,200. He's been pretty good through two weeks. He's looked really good. Um, and he looks more like two years ago Andy Dalton instead of like last year. But there were parts last year where Andy Dalton actually looked pretty good. Uh, I don't really want to dumpster dive. Uh, I have been thinking about dumpster diving with Josh Allen not in cash on FanDuel or on DraftKings. Just because he's 4,500, he needs about 13.5 points to pay off. Which is, you know, if he runs for five yards and throws for 240 and a touchdown he's there he hit value um all big ifs but you get my point um but he's not cheap enough over here on FanDuel so it, it'll either be, it'll be Jimmy G or Cam for me uh it leaves me $600 left over so you can either go up from Michael Crabtree to Manny Sanders uh, or and I don't really want to play DT, so it'd be Manny Sanders, but I don't really want to go up there. So we'll go back to Crabtree. Go ahead and pay up at defense. Um, the Cowboys are by no means safe, um, so we'll pay up a little bit here. Uh, there's not much to pay up is also the point. So it's it's kind of hard to spend this last $600. That's why I'm kind of like, well, let me just find the way to Cam because I like Cam more than Jimmy G. Cam gives you the rushing touchdown. So if you put Cam in there, you're 300 short. My easiest fix for this is to go to defense and just punt defense with the Bills. Um, I know then you're playing the Minnesota defense, or you're playing the the Lat Murray over the Bill over against the Bills defense, and the Bills should get absolutely shelled. 
in this game, but, but, a zero from the Bills defense is really not all that killer if Cam, because, like I said, your median expectation out of your defense is like six to eight points. You should never expect your defense to get you 15 points. So if you're sacrificing six points for a play that you really like, and I mean, the Bills could get a couple of sacks and maybe an interception. I, they they can find a way to points, and if they score you two points, your opportunity cost is not really that high. That's my point. I don't necessarily love this. We'll see how things progress. Uh, you can always come down from Crabtree. That's another option. I just kind of like Crabtree, so I kind of wanted him in the line. But you can come down off of Crabtree. Um, let's see. Who did I say I like down here? We'll go ahead and we'll go with a Brandon Marshall, and then we'll go with the Cowboys. Uh, like I said, I'm not expecting the Cowboys to shut him out or anything like that. I'm just expecting six points, maybe a couple, four sacks on Russ because that line is horrible. We'll go with a respectable three. We'll say three sacks and a turnover of some sort because the offensive line is terrible. Strip sack, um, interception, something. That puts us at like six points or whatever and without whatever they hold them to. So Brandon Marshall can still do his thing and the Cowboys defense still score their six to eight points. But that is going to do it for the fan up, fan duel lineup builder, guys. I hope you all enjoyed. Drop a like if you did. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's final breakdown for DraftKings. I'm going to get my notes compiled and figure out exactly what I'm going to do with my lineup. And we'll go over that in tomorrow's video. A lot of this stuff applies to fan duel. You just got to kind of... You got to compute stuff in your head. So if I really like a guy on DraftKings for his receiving upside, like an Alvin Kamara, limits what you can do over here on on FanDuel. Uh, maybe temper that expectation. But high touchdown upside guys like Jordan Howard and Alex Collins, who Howard has been catching more balls, but just as the example, guys that don't catch a lot of balls, they can be more of FanDuel plays, but not all that important on DraftKings. That's my point, but I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out.